In this video, we learn about some of the most fundamental atoms of probability theory, events and sample spaces. This is our first video in this probability subject where we're making use of hands-on code demo in a way we're not really gonna be executing any code, but this content is contained within Jupyter Notebook. So we're gonna to wanna to make our way to the Machine Learning Foundation's GitHub repository. And then from here, you can either click on this subject five probability and information theory link here to open the notebook, or you can go into notebooks, into this directory, and you can open up the same probability notebook here. When you do that, it'll open up this Jupyter notebook in GitHub. And if you want to, you can just follow along statically with all of the content here. Alternatively, and my recommendation, particularly for later when we do start actually executing code interactively, which we will be shortly in this subject, then make your way to Colab. So you can click on this open in Colab button and it will open this Jupyter notebook in Colab, which looks like this. So as ever, when we're working with one of my Jupyter notebooks from the top, we wanna be heading to edit and clear all outputs so that we don't have all of the outputs that are available in GitHub. We wanna uh, create them afresh in our own way so you can make changes and get your own unique outputs as opposed to the ones that I have specifically output previously. So at the very top of this notebook, there are some imports. So there are some Python libraries that we will be using extensively throughout this notebook. NumPy for numeric operations, SciPy for some statistics, Matplotlib and Seaborn, both for plotting information. So you can import those now, even though we won't actually be using them in this particular video, but we will get to them later on. All right, so the actual content that we're covering in this video is the first topic in this what probability theory is section. And that topic is called events and sample spaces. So to explain what these concepts are, let's assume that we have a fair coin. So this is a coin that has a head side or a tail side, and it being fair means that there's a 50-50 chance that it will come up heads or tails on a given coin flip. In instances like this, where the two outcomes are equally likely, we can use probability theory to express the likelihood of a particular event by comparing it with the sample space. So an event is one particular observation or set of observations that we make. And then the sample space is the set of all of the possible outcomes. And we can denote that sample space with the Greek letter omega. So to get an understanding of this equation, so it, the probability of some event is the number of outcomes of the event divided by the number of outcomes in our set of all the possible outcomes. To understand this equation, let's use some real numbers. It'll make it a lot easier. So let's say if we're flipping a coin only once, then there are two possible outcomes in the sample space omega. Either the outcome will be heads, or it will be tails. So H or T, capital H or T, is a common convention for expressing some observation that we're observing in probability theory. And so using set notation, we could write this possible sample space omega as open curly bracket H comma T close curly bracket. So that's what this set notation is. So we're saying that, so this set notation, these curly brackets indicate what all of the possibilities are, and then we use a comma to break up the different possibilities. So there are only two possible outcomes in our set of all of the possibilities, and those are heads, H, or tails, T. All right, so if we want to find the probability of heads, and remember, this is a scenario where it's a fair coin, that's a critical caveat to bear in mind here, but as long as it's a fair coin, then the probability of heads is one in two. So the probability of having heads, there's one of our events in our set of all of the possible events where there's two, that gives us one in two. So going back to our equation here, the probability of some event, so in this case, the probability of heads H is equal to the number of outcomes that represent that event. So just H in this case, there's only one event 
h. And all of the outcomes in our set consist of two events, h and t. So we have a denominator of two. And then the math is pretty simple. We have one outcome out of two, all of the possible outcomes. And so one divided by two is just 0.5. So there's a probability of 0.5 of getting heads on any given toss of a fair coin. Um, we can also say that that is a 50% chance of heads. Equally, the probability of tails is also 50% or probability of 0.5, because again, there is only one outcome of tails out of our two possible outcomes. So one outcome that's tails out of our two possible outcomes, heads and tails. So one and two gives us a 0.5 probability of tails, a 50% chance of tails. Now, as a second separate example, consider drawing a single card from a standard deck of 52 playing cards. In this case, the number of possible outcomes in the sample space omega, our denominator, becomes 52. So, there's only one ace of spades in the deck, say. So the probability of drawing the ace of spades, the probability of getting the ace of spades is one in 52, or about a probability of 0 0.02 or 2%. In contrast, there are four aces, and so the probability of drawing an ace is four in 52. And so that comes out to a probability of about 0 0.08 or about 8%. There's a few more fun examples to understand this concept even better. The probability of drawing a spade is 13 in 52. So of the 52 cards in a standard card deck, 13 of those are spades, one in four. And so that comes out to a probability of drawing a spade being 0.25 or 25%. Now, what about having these kinds of statements like this? We can do this too. We don't have to limit ourselves to just you know, one kind of definition of a card, we could say, what's the probability of drawing a card that is either an ace or a spade? Well, in that case, there are 16 cards in the deck that are either an ace or a spade. And so the probability of drawing those is 16 and 52, or about 0.31, about 31%. And then a couple more examples that crystallize this idea further is that we can say the probability of drawing a card, any card, from the 52 cards. Well, there's a 52 in 52 chance that we'll do that. So there's a probability of one, a 100% chance that any card we pull out of the deck is going to be a card. Whereas the probability of pulling a turnip out is zero in 52. There's no chance that we're going to end up pulling out a turnip. <laughs> and so that probability is zero in 52 or zero, probability of 0%. All right, so now we have an understanding of how to express the probability of a single observation, but what if we have multiple observations? So say two successive coin flips instead of just one. Well, handling multiple observations like this is the focus of the next video. To be sure not to miss the next video in this series, subscribe to my channel. Thanks for taking part in this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like and comment. To be sure not to miss any of my content, head to johncrone.com and sign up for my email newsletter. You're also welcome to add me on LinkedIn. Simply mention that you're a viewer of the Machine Learning Foundation series. And finally, you can follow me on Twitter too if that's your social medium of choice.